You've got some serious nerves. Do you know that? Honestly, where do you get off? I want you to tell me exactly why I'm not allowed back at my own parents' house. And just when did you move in there and start living with them? Huh, I don't remember that ever being a thing. Becky, what is this all about? I'm afraid I really don't understand. I'm talking about my parents' house. That house is my house. Do you understand? How dare you just barge in there as if you own the place? I mean, you even have the gall to take over my own bedroom. And now, I can't even go back there to live with them. I want you out of that house right away. Do you understand me? Sorry. So you're wanting to move back in with your parents right now? Is that what's going on? But I thought that you moved to New York last spring, right? You said the last family dinner about how you had found some really great job and they were going to put you up out of there, right? I know what I said. Thank you very much. But I quit that job and I am never, ever, ever going back. I just want to live with my parents in my hometown and that's that, okay? You quit your job? But you really just started it, didn't you? I know that I just started it. But I didn't like it one bit, and I hate New York City. Why do you think I'm coming back and wanting to move back in the first place? But imagine my shock when I find out that you and my brother have moved in with my parents since I moved out. I don't ever remember telling you that you were allowed to live there or use my room, Sarah. I want to move back there because what's the point of paying rent in some place when you can just live with your parents and not have to worry about anything. Oh, Becky, I'm really sorry. I thought that Nikki would have told you that we were moving in already. But yeah, we all agreed to do this after you moved out for your job in the big city. Well, now I'm moving back. So you and Nikki can go ahead and pack up all your things because you both are moving out. So leave and give me back my room already. Becky, please, you can't be serious about that. I mean, we did so much in preparation for this. You can't just announce that you're moving back and expect everyone to accommodate you. Do you know how troublesome it's going to be for us to do what you want? You think you're going to be inconvenienced by this? What about me? I quit my job. I'm unemployed. Don't you get it? I have no job and no house at all. If you don't want to move out, then the least that you can do is pay my rent in my new place. So you really think we're just going to pay for a whole apartment that we aren't living in? Well, if you don't like it, then you know what you have to do. Sarah, are you there? I really am sorry to bug you like this while you're at work, but I had something that I needed to talk to you about. You didn't by chance happen to get some messages from Becky, did you? Oh yes. We were actually just talking to each other not that long ago. And if you must know, she told me that she was going to be moving back in and that she wanted us out of the house. She said that if we didn't want to do that, then we could just pay her rent for where she's at now. I can't believe that she would do something like this. She's being so ridiculous. Ah, oh, Sarah, I am so sorry that you're having to deal with this. My sister has never really been good at not getting her way. I'll say. I mean, I was pretty surprised when she started sending me those messages. She can't honestly expect us to just pack up and leave at the drop of a hat like this, right? I thought that she was just so excited to start her job in New York. I have no idea what happened or what made her want to come back. I know it really is all so sudden. I actually just heard about it from Becky right now and even I'm floored. I didn't even see this coming at all. I remember when she told everyone about the job she was so excited that she was never going to come back home ever. She said that she was going to be a city girl from then on out. That's why your parents came to us in the first place. They thought that this would be a chance for them to spend more time with their eldest son. But I had no idea that we would have such a short time to live in the house before being asked by Becky to leave. I know what you mean. Something must have happened that really disillusioned her with whatever it was that was posted in New York in the first place. 
I really did think that this was something that she wanted to do though. So I wonder what must have happened. Do you have any idea what it could have been about at all? She was excited to leave. But now she seems so desperate to come back. Well, the thing about Becky is that around these parts, she's really smart and beautiful, right? She was actually always talking ever since she was little about wanting to go to the big city and make it big. But I guess that maybe she was just intimidated by how many kinds of different people there are in a place like that. Maybe she realized that her smarts and looks wouldn't take her as far as they had here and she got a bit intimidated. Or maybe there was something about the job that just made her really want to quit and come home. You really think that's what it could have been? That she just got her ego bruised a little? I really have no idea what it is with her. But I guess now that she's made up her mind, do you think you can move out of the house, maybe? Wait, what? Nikki, please tell me you're joking, right? Of course I'm not just going to move out of the house. That's ridiculous. I literally got a new job just so you and I could move out here together, remember? I know, I know, but it's just, well, it's kind of out of our hands now, really. I tried telling Becky that this was our home now, but she just wasn't listening at all. So I think you just don't really have a choice anymore. So you're really telling me that I need to move out of the house to make room for your sister? Your parents begged for you and I to come and live with them. And now you're saying you want to end it? I get Becky's feeling down, but this is all just so rude. It isn't fair at all. <laughs> Come on now, Sarah. Don't be such a baby about this. It's not like anyone is forcing you to do anything. I just asked if you could move out. And that's still super rude of you. I mean, how could you even ask me that? I know, I know, but neither of us knew that Becky was going to come back, right? We thought she was going to be in New York forever, but now she's not. Besides, just think of how lonely my dad is without his daughter around. Don't you start with me, Nikki. I was against moving in with your parents this whole time, but you insisted that we'd do it over and over again. Even your dad told you to drop it since he could tell that I didn't want to do it. You even agreed to do all of the housekeeping if I agreed to move in with your parents. But instead, I've been doing most of it all the time. Okay, okay, I, I get it. Jeez, I was just asking because I thought you might say yes if it was from me. But I'm sorry for even mentioning it. I really didn't think that you would freak out on me like this at all. What do you mean? Why are you trying to act as if I'm in the wrong for not wanting to move out? Because this is my little sister coming back to live with a family. But I guess I'll just have to tell her that you're refusing to move out and that she'll just have to have a good luck finding a place to live. I'm sure that will fix this whole situation, don't you think? Nikki, why are you doing this? You're really making me feel bad about just not wanting to move away from this. What are you going to do as I say and finally move out, huh? Do you have any idea just how much trouble you've been putting me through? Everything that's going wrong with my life is all your fault. My fault? Are you kidding me? Just how do you figure that, huh? It's not just me that you're causing trouble for, though. I mean, do you think that my mom and dad would really prefer to live with some woman they hardly know versus their own daughter? And you need to read the room and recognize that you were not wanted here at all. So hurry up, get the picture, and move out already. Read the room? You have seriously got to be kidding me. That is rich coming from you. But I guess you might be right about one thing. Everyone has been acting very cold towards me these days. You mean, you only notice them acting that way towards you now? It took you long enough, I'll say. That's right. Everyone here must be so worried about you. I hear all about how they are making every effort to go and visit you. They're even cooking and cleaning for you. Isn't that right? And just what is wrong with that, huh? My parents have always enjoyed spoiling me when they can. And this is no different. I don't see anything wrong with them wanting to take care of their daughter while she's so distressed after coming home from New York. 
so far be it for me to tell them to not take care of me if that's what they want to do. And then when they do get back from your apartment, they all treat me like I'm to blame for having them go back and forth from the house. I have been told that I'm just being cruel for making you live like that, when all I want to do is not have to move again. Well, if people are telling you that, then I guess you would better listen to them. Huh, can't you see that everyone wants you out of here already? You would make everything easier for everyone if you were gone. LOL. And even your own brother is starting to go back on his work even more and making me do more and more of the housework. And even though he's cooking for me as well, I've been getting more and more instant noodles and that's it. You know, your dad won't even look me in the eye anymore. Nikki said that none of this is going to stop until I've moved out. I don't have any other friends in this family at all. Everyone is blaming me for this. Well, maybe that's because it's all your fault, Sarah. If you would just move out of the house, then all of this would come to an end for you. I mean, are you really so lazy that having to do your own housework and cooking is all that upsetting for you? You don't contribute anything at all while you leech off of my family. And you think you have the right to complain? I have no idea how you were raised. But you really need to get a grip on reality if you think this is it, okay. Hold on a second. You think that I'm being a leech on your family? No, of course you are. You refuse to move out or do any chores or cooking or anything like that. Meanwhile, you eat the food in our house, sleep in a bed under their roof. What else do you call that but a leech? And everyone knows it too because you're sucking off of everyone. When are you going to wake up and realize that nobody wants you? You have no idea what you're talking about at all. I have no idea why everyone is being so cruel to me. I am sick and tired of your complaints. Just shut up and leave already. I mean, why haven't you moved out? Oh, don't worry. I'm going back to my parents' house right now. I can't deal with this any longer. Well, good riddance, I say. It's about time you left my family alone. LOL. And now that you're finally gone, I get to go back to my life with my family. But I'll never get back the time that you stole from me. At least, I'll be able to rest and relax without having to worry about you ever coming back. I just hope that you've taken all your stuff with you. Oh, don't worry about that. In fact, if I were you, I would start cleaning up your apartment to make room for your family. Just what is that supposed to mean? Why in the world would I need to get my apartment ready for my family? I'm going to live with them, remember? Except that I'm actually in the process of selling your house right now. So I'm afraid that your family won't have anywhere else to live. You all better start looking for a new place. Wait, what? Seriously? What are you even talking about? What do you mean you sold my family's house? That doesn't make any sense. There is no way that you could have done something like that. I mean, I know you're upset that you're getting thrown out, but there's no need to make up a lie like this. I'm not lying about anything, Becky. It was my name on the house's deed, you see? That still doesn't make any sense at all. Why would your name be on my family's house deed? You really don't pay attention to anything that goes on with your family that doesn't concern you, do you? I took over the deed to the house from the moment Nikki and I moved in with them. In fact, it was your family that forced me to do that, if you really want to know. But that... I don't... Why would they do that? Why would they want your name on that? It all goes back to when we moved in. You see, Nikki had been begging me to go along with it and even offered to do all of the housework if I agreed. He told me that I wouldn't have to do any more work if we did this. And I trust him. But then he started to scratch away at his promise bit by bit. What do you mean by that? What did he do? Well, first everyone was so grateful that I had finally agreed. But then Nikki said that we would need to buy a new washing machine to fit all our clothes in. 
Then he said that he would need to get a brand new fridge to fit enough food for all of us. And bit by bit, we started buying all the new things for the house. In the end, we must have spent over $100,000 upgrading the house. Hold on a second. You spent over $100,000 on the house? That's right. I told him that I wanted my parents to pay me back for some of that money, but he suggested I just put my name on the deed on the house and call it even. I told him that that was taking it too far and that surely we could think of something else. But he just kept insisting about it until you finally agreed to just take the house. I really didn't think that he was going to go along with it. But I guess he really didn't want to have him or his parents pay me back that much money. He pretended to be so sad about losing the house, but I could tell that he just thought he was getting a great deal. I don't believe it. Why would he do something so stupid? I didn't even sign off on it in the end, but they basically did all the paperwork needed. And one day when I got home for work, Nikki said that all I needed to do was sign. I was sick of arguing with him over it, so I just agreed to it then and there. He told me that now we were even for all the appliances, except they made me continue to pay for all of the utilities. I've even been the one buying groceries for everyone. I don't believe it. I don't know what to say. I had no idea that you were already paying so much for everyone this whole time. Not only that, but then Nikki started to make me do more and more of the housework. So I had to pay more and do more around the house, all while I was still going to work. I was already starting to get to the end of my wits when all of a sudden this happened, and your family started treating me even worse. But when I realized that no one was going to stand up for me anymore, I knew what I had to do. And by that, you mean you signed the house back over to my parents, right? Oh no, nothing like that at all. Hey, Sarah, just what the heck is going on here, huh? I just heard from Becky that you told her that you were selling our house. What's the matter with you? If you really wanted to move out permanently, you should have just given us the house back. You don't have to sell it. Yeah, I thought about doing that for a little bit. Then I chose to sell the house anyway. After all, I felt like I was pretty justified in doing it. And what is that supposed to mean? It means that you all pushed me to the point where I had no qualms about selling the house without even telling any of you. So enjoy finding a new place to live. But you can't just do this to us. It isn't fair. What's the matter with you? Do you have any idea the kinds of things that you've been putting me through? You begged me to move in with your parents when you knew I didn't want to do it. And then you treated me like I was in the way for not wanting to move out. I can't stand the thought of spending another day in the house with all of you. Sarah, please just hold on. We can talk about this, can't we? You have to know that I'm so sorry for everything up till now. I really didn't know that you felt like this. I'm sorry for forcing you to move in with my family. But you don't have to do this. It's too late. I've already made up my mind and I am going to be selling the house. I don't care what you say to me or how many times you apologize. Is this about money? We can pay you back for all the things that you bought, I swear. You just can't do it all at once is the thing. I don't want to hear it from you. And that still won't make me any less upset with you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have better things to do than to talk in circles with you. I can't believe you really threw my whole family out of their house. They're all cramped inside my tiny apartment now. And it's all your fault. Aww. Did you finally have your little family reunion? I'm so happy for you all. The least you could have done is pay for all of their moving fees. Do you have any idea how expensive it was for them? I have already given them more than enough of my money. I certainly don't intend on giving them any more. Please, you have to do something to get them out of here. I can't stand being in such tight quarters with them. I'm going to go crazy. Yeah, that really doesn't sound like my problem at all. I guess you'll all just have to start working and save up until you can afford a better place. But this isn't fair. I quit my job because I hated working. And I just wanted to live with my family and have them take care of me. It wasn't supposed to be this way. 
Following our finalizing divorce, an unexpected twist occurred just a week after my heartfelt conversation with Becky. To my astonishment, Nikki's entire family appeared at my doorstep, begging for forgiveness with a sense of desperation and remorse. Caught off guard by this traumatic scene, I realized the need to establish boundaries and prioritize my well-being. I made it clear that discussions would have to wait until the divorce papers were signed, allowing me to maintain clarity and protect my sanity in the midst of the turmoil. Once the legal formalities were complete, a profound silence settled, leaving me in a contemplative state. Uncertain of which path to take, I granted myself a few precious days of respite, knowing that the lease on our shared home would soon expire. During this opportune window, I meticulously packed my belongings, bidding farewell to a place that held memories, and embarked on a daring adventure, relocating to a new residence in a nearby city. Motivated by a strong desire to distance myself from Nikki and his family, I carefully planned each move, ensuring my intentions remained hidden until the right moment. In those fleeting days before my departure, I vanished like a ghost, leaving no trace behind. With swift precision, I severed the ties that bound me to my past life, reclaiming my independence and freedom. Taking the bold step of changing my phone number became an act of self-preservation, symbolically cutting the final connection to my previous existence. Every precaution was taken to ensure Nikki and his family would be left in the dark, unable to follow my footsteps. I was determined to create a shield of anonymity, guaranteeing they would never find me. As I journeyed into the unknown, I found solace in the realization that I held the reins of my destiny. Though the road ahead was uncertain, I embraced it with newfound strength and resilience. Each passing day reaffirmed my conviction, proving my ability to rise above adversity and shape a future uniquely my own.